It is so freaking difficult to make a good fantasy anime these days, let alone adding a crazy twist like cooking to it. When I first heard about the series, I thought about all the times I saw an anime that tried to put a new spin on something and didn't quite succeed. After all, combining two things doesn't really make sense if you can't even do one thing right. So when I sat down to watch today's show, an anime that blends one of the most notoriously difficult genres to pull off with cooking, it felt exactly like opening a treasure chest. There's a huge possibility you're going to end up stumbling on a nest of spiders or just a bunch of dust. But there is also a tiny chance you might find an actual treasure. In this case, I wasn't sure, but what I did know is that the second I started, this story had nothing to do with anything I'd seen before. So today, I'm going to find out if this anime can do fantasy or if it can do cooking, but most importantly, if it can do both at the same time. Delicious in Dungeon immediately begins with a thrilling fight between a group of adventurers and a giant fire-breathing red dragon. This is their final battle and they use all of their skills, powers, and heart to beat the creature. The dragon easily counters all of their attacks, but the armored warrior, hero of the group, charges in in a last effort to defeat the enemy. And it's exactly at this point that I start to get worried. Even though almost everything I've seen so far is typical fantasy, there's this one detail that I really didn't expect. These adventurers don't lose the dragon because they're weak fighters, they lose because they're too hungry to be good fighters. And I can see that the anime is trying something risky in the first few minutes so I can't take my eyes off the screen. When the remaining members of the group wake up and regroup, they come up with a crazy plan. Save the person who was eaten by the dragon before she's digested. That's when we meet our three heroes. Laios, the optimistic and adventurous human warrior. Marcel, the careful but knowledgeable elf mage and Chilchuck, the sensible half-foot lockpicker. Together, they embark on a journey through the lower levels of the dungeon where they meet Senshi, a bearded dwarf who insists on joining the group. Senshi excitedly tells them about his dream to defeat a red dragon. Most importantly, he tells us about his skill in cooking all kinds of strange dungeon creatures that he's been perfecting for 10 years. As I watched our full group of heroes dive deeper and deeper into the dungeon, the first episode ended and all I wanted was to watch the next one. because I actually liked it. And with liking it, I felt more worried because the next few episodes would show me if this anime was really something special or if the first episode was just a fluke. To find out, I decided to focus on the cooking aspect because if that part fails, then the whole idea falls apart. As our heroes make their way through the dungeon, they meet a wide variety of creatures. Some are familiar beasts from classic fantasy series, while others are wonderfully unique but they don't immediately fight every creature they meet. First, they study their actions and learn about them to figure out the best way to approach them. There's a scene where the party has to fight a group of empty armors. At first, the adventurers think these armors are moved by some kind of magic, leading them to look for the source of their power. But despite their efforts, they find nothing. As the fight goes on, Lyos battles the strongest armor, and it is during this fight that he discovers tiny mollusks inside the armors, controlling them from within. This changes everything about the fight. The challenge isn't just about stopping the magic anymore. Instead, the group has to quickly change their tactics to deal with this unusual enemy. And I mean, I totally get it. It's kind of original and fresh and different, but honestly, to me, it didn't feel like this made a big difference. Whether the armor is controlled by magic or some kind of slimy mollusk, it doesn't change the fact that you need to find those controlling it. And even though knowing about these creatures is cool, it felt pretty useless to me considering they were going to be killed anyway. And that's when it totally hit me. These armors, just like all the other creatures they meet, are not just enemies blocking the path of our heroes, something you and I might consider only in terms of combat strategies, or the rewards you might get from them. There's a deep respect for them and their place in the ecosystem. And this respect significantly changes how the group interacts with these creatures, leading to a more thoughtful approach to the meals they prepare and eat, but also what goes into these meals. Don't get me wrong, I've seen plenty of series where I was shaking in anticipation before a fight against a certain character or a legendary boss or even a hyped villain. But no fantasy series has ever made me this excited about finding a new creature. Every encounter with them feels like discovering a completely different aspect of a beast we might have seen before in other series. And every meal feels like the reward of the group's hard work giving you the satisfaction only a warm, 
cozy winter dinner with friends can give. This series has a way to make you think about the entire process of putting food on a plate, but it also discusses the importance of eating a balanced and nutritious diet without ever feeling like a lesson. I actually managed to pull all of this off while always being fun. It reminded me of how awesome and rewarding it feels to learn how to cook, especially when you're the one making these warm, cozy meals for your friends. As I watched more episodes, I realized how much I was enjoying it. Delicious and Dungeon really nailed its cooking. Which led me to one final question. Was the fancy part of the series any good? And for that, I had to check the single most important part of any fantasy series. The thing that makes you want to play these epic RPG games with your friends. It's the people you do it with. Or in other words, the characters. Laios is very optimistic, especially when it comes to the creatures he encounters. When I say he's optimistic, what I really mean is that he wants to eat all of them. It's a bit like trying to catch every Pokemon, but instead of trying to put them into balls, you put them into bowls. There's a scene in the first episode where a plant tries to kill Marcel by squeezing her and putting seeds under her skin. Hey, I didn't say there wasn't any weird stuff happening, okay? But after she's saved, instead of asking if she's okay, Laios is fangirling about the plant and has the audacity to ask her if it was maybe kind of comfortable, actually. Marcel, the only mage left in the group, wants to prove her herself. She sometimes makes pretty questionable decisions, like that time she wanted to sacrifice an actual dog to get a plant. But most importantly, she really hates the idea of eating creatures, making her the exact opposite of Laios. Sanchi is the guy who prepares the meals, but he is passionate, he is ready, and he is serious about the meals. And sometimes he's willing to go very far to prepare them. And Chilchuk is the guy who has to deal with this bunch of weirdos. He makes sure they don't get into too much trouble or make any stupid decisions, which they do all the time. Each character is unique and funny in their own way, but it's the combination of their different kinds of humor that makes this series so funny. They're all so different, but when it comes to making me laugh, their dynamic works in ways that really caught me off guard. And I can't remember the last time an anime made me laugh so much. And don't get me wrong, I like humor as much as the next guy, but if humor is the only thing that brings these people together, it can be really difficult to connect with them. Because in the end, what makes your friend your friend is the journey you guys share together, the things you learn, and how you help each other grow. So I continue watching until at one point the group needs to cross a river. Marcel wants to use her magic to help. The problem is, Senshi hates magic and refuses to let her use it on him. Instead, he trusts a Kelpie, a horse-like creature, to help him cross. But as soon as he gets onto its back, the Kelpie tries to drown him. Luckily, they manage to save Senshi and kill the Kelpie. In that moment, Senshi realizes his love for these creatures could be dangerous to himself, but most importantly, to his friends. Marcel gives him a gift that will make it easier to use magic on him. And this time, he agrees. He learns that his passion for these dungeon creatures can be risky and that sometimes magic can actually be the answer. This little tiny scene shows Senshi growing not only as a person, but also as a member of this group. This series puts an incredible amount of effort into creating the perfect fantasy team. They perfectly complement each other when it comes to comedy, but they also share touching emotional moments. The author knows how to make you feel connected to these characters. They show that you can't care about the group if you don't care about each member, which is why we get these glimpses into their individual journeys, these moments that truly let each one of them shine. It's hard to pick a favorite character in an anime where you feel like you're kind of part of the group. Many of us have met someone with a very different personality from us and thought we could never connect. The Delicious and Dungeon shows us that sometimes it's these differences that make strong bonds possible. That's why the fantasy part of the series works so freaking well. But it's also why I kept watching, wondering if Delicious and Dungeon had achieved what it set out to do in the first place. This series really resonates with that part of me that loves having fun experiences with others, like sharing a meal with friends I haven't seen in a long time. The Delicious and Dungeon isn't just a mix of fantasy and cooking. It isn't just a fresh take on something we've already seen or a gimmicky fusion of two genres. At its heart, it's an anime that exudes passion. It explores new ways of telling stories and creates something truly unique. But it also teaches us a valuable lesson. That we are so much more than just one thing. I'm sure many of us can relate to being pushed in a certain direction. But we're rarely encouraged to try something new. In a weird way, I feel like Delicious in Dungeon is also saying that just like a good meal, our lives should be balanced. These days, it's easy to forget about the world around us and miss out on chances we could have taken. Maybe it's time to reconnect with that friend you've been hesitant to talk to, or to learn that new skill you've been putting off forever. And who knows, maybe these things will combine in ways that you'd never expect. If possible, 
trying new things. You are a multifaceted person and you are unique. In fact, that's what makes you delicious.